ABC News Now. Blustery winds will stick around for the rest of this Monday, but we'll let you know if things could be calmer on Tuesday. Goodbye playoffs. We gotta play better. I think it's as simple as that. How the Washington Commanders will spend the rest of their season. Plus, could the proposal to move the Washington Wizards and the Capitals do more harm? Cars are really involved in that for a lot of people. Then, if you still need those last minute gifts shipped, a price check on the best rates to save. We're stretching your dollar. And later, a major breakthrough for people living with sickle cell disease. This will provide a tremendous hope. A DC doctor shares why this powerful new treatment is such a game changer. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Annalisa Gale in for Mark Hall today on this DMV first war day. De meteorologist Damon Matson now joining us with the latest check on this Monday forecast. And Damon, it has been quite a messy one overnight. What a roller coaster ride, Annalisa. Yeah, we had all of that rain kicked us off yesterday. And now, as we get later in the day today, it's more about the wind. But folks, that rainfall yesterday was no joke as we ended up seeing several Several different instances of flooding, especially in and around the DC Metro and go figure. Look at some of these official rainfall reports that were put out by the National Weather Service. There were several different numbers across DC alone as depending on your exact location, those numbers definitely can vary. But we saw a report 2.85 inches for Washington DC. Look at this California, Maryland in St. Mary's County, almost four inches of rain fell. Dumfries Virginia also on the same page there and then we had various two inch totals in Damascus Alexandria and over toward Burke. Now that being the case the flood watch is done but we still do have a couple of flood warnings because of rising stream levels at least into early this afternoon. We have one in Prince George's and Anne Arundel County another in St. Mary's County and a final flood warning in Prince William County. All of these go until 1 to 2 p.m. and then we should see those flood warnings then expire. But now that the rain is done, the wind is going to be the primary thing we notice the rest of the day today. Look at some of these peak wind gusts already. Sibyllisville, Maryland and Frederick County, 56 miles per hour. There was a 53 mile per hour gust recorded at Reagan. And yes, we're going to continue to see gusts close to 50 miles per hour, at least through the rest of the afternoon. So while we see more sunshine, it's definitely going to remain blustery as we go throughout the rest of the day. So folks, how long is it going to be until these winds start to calm down? And are we even talking about some snow falling in the mountains? We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Busy day in the weather department. The wind and rain knocking over several trees and power lines overnight and into this morning. DC News Now's Liberties Abolish shows us some of that damage across the DMV as the wind advisory remains in effect for many parts of the region. Well, as we're driving throughout the district, we are seeing a lot of damp road conditions out there. We're seeing the winds pick up, so please slow down. Give yourself that extra time before you head out the door, and I want to flip over the camera to give you a look at the slick road conditions right now. We have been seeing minor flooding out there, and that is why you need to slow down. All of the flooding and the puddling we've been seeing could cause your car to hydroplane, and if you do see water, this is a good reminder to turn around and don't drown. Just to give you a heads up, most flood deaths do occur in vehicles. Now, the rainfall totals we have been seeing since earlier this morning range between one inch to nearly two inches. But now that the rain has moved out, now the winds have been an issue and will be an issue. We've been seeing the winds gusting at about 45 miles an hour and we caught a crew earlier this morning working to clear out a downed tree from the roadways as well in the district. So be aware of that. We have seen as we've been driving several crews working to repair power lines. Now again, we are going to be seeing those winds gusting up to 50 miles an hour and that could make it very tricky driving in high profile vehicles like SUVs and because 
because the roadways are so saturated and because the ground is so saturated along with the gusty wind conditions, we could see even more down trees and more down power lines throughout the district. So do be aware of that and do be careful and I'll send it back to you in the studio. Liberty, thank you. And a commuter alert right now. Potential travel delay starting today on Metro. The red line service will be suspended for two weeks between DuPont Circle and Gallery Place. Now, this only affects red line service. Metro will make free shuttle bus service available from those stations to Metro Center. WMATA says they chose this time of year to make repairs because there tends to be fewer riders. Also today, the bus loop at Friendship Hyde Station will close. That loop will be closed for two months, and in that time, it will be repaved. Bus service will operate during the construction. The station and all entrances will remain open. Some bus stop locations will move to Western Avenue and 44th Street. Metro has also expanded some of its bus service around the DMV. 14 routes around the district are now operating 24 hours, seven days a week. The expanded service started overnight and involves some of the most popular bus lines. Metro says between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Metro bus will operate every 20 minutes or better along those routes to support late night and early morning essential workers in hospitality, health care and entertainment industries. People work downtown and they really need it. People work late at night, you know, so they really need the transportation. Passengers who travel between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. may also request a courtesy stop so they can get off closer to their destinations instead of a bus stop. Well, turning now to sports. The Washington Commanders have lost the chance to participate in the playoffs following their loss to the Rams yesterday. It's the Commanders' fifth consecutive loss, during, dropping them now to 4-10 and ten this season. The Commanders got off to a bad start yesterday, along the Rams to jump out a, to a 20-point lead. Now, quarterback Sam Howell was replaced by backup Jacoby Brissett. He drove down the field for a touchdown on both drives after taking over in the fourth quarter. The team knows they need to improve if they want a a better result next season. Yeah, it, it is frustrating. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Uh, we got to play better. I think it's as simple as that. We haven't played up to our standard pretty much the whole year, and we play with maybe a little bit better, but it really doesn't matter, right? There's no moral victories in football, so we got to play better. Now, according to some statistics, they would have the fourth pick in the draft if the season ended today. They'll face the New York Jets next Sunday. Well, after a tree trimmer was killed while working on the side of 495 in Silver Spring on Wednesday morning, lawmakers in Maryland are hoping to make work zones safer. Daniel Hamburg has the latest from the lieutenant governor. 57-year-old Eric Lewis of D.C. is the latest victim of a work zone crash. The foreman of a tree trimming operation here on I-495 hit and killed by a truck driver who drove away. It's a really heart-wrenching, Daniel. Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller says right now there are over 300 construction zones across the state with more than 1,000 workers. And so far to date, We've had over 1,100 crashes in the state of Maryland. Miller says better advertising and education are at the top of things to improve. We're talking about making sure we go into our schools, teach kids early on, making sure in the driver's manual we talk about the move over law. Maryland's move over law requires all drivers to make a lane change or slow down when passing a stopped vehicle with hazard lights or warning signs. Violating the law carries a $110 fine and a point on your license. She wants to see better enforcement. Right now in Maryland, when you speed through a work zone... The citation amount is $40. It is the lowest in the nation. There are some states like Texas, it's up to $1,000. Miller says it will take a culture shift to change driver behavior, but it's necessary to protect workers. All of us need to come home to our loved ones, and we each have a responsibility to make sure that happens. Daniel, thank you. Uh, developing now at 1209, D.C. police are investigating a robbery at a luxury store downtown, which ended with a security guard firing their gun. Police say it started when a group of at least six people entered the Chanel store on I Street around 530 in the evening. We're told one of those people sprayed a fire extinguisher as a distraction while the rest of the group stole that merchandise there. The group then turned to leave, and that is when police say a special police officer fired his weapon. A armed security guard that was employed by the Chanel store uh, discharged one round. Uh, that round did not take effect. At this time, we do not have any property damage. 
nor do we have any reports. No other injuries were reported there as well. Well, turning out of Virginia, people living in Potomac Yard are still raising concerns about the proposal to move the Caps and the Wizards and the ripple effects the move could potentially have there. Some say they're worried about what their day to day life will be like if thousands of fans are coming to their neighborhood each night. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla has more on the mixed reactions still circulating. For some people who live in Potomac Yard, the promise of a transformation of this land into a full blown entertainment center is exciting. There's a reason why Virginia is scaling up so quickly uh, and has been over the, the last five to 10 years. Josh Baroni has lived here for just a few months, but sees a future a few years from now where he can get cap season tickets. His optimism is not unique, but it certainly isn't unanimous. If you're talking to people about how they're going to live their daily lives, cars are really involved in that for a lot of people. Vida estimates that nearly 75,000 cars travel Route 1 and the GW Parkway in Alexandria each day, and traffic issues are a major holdup for people who drive these roads not to get to a game, but to get to school, work, and run errands. Mayor Justin Wilson calls what was proposed a transit arena with Metro playing a big role, but he admits right now the station isn't adequate. Baroni says this is a chance to turn this neighborhood into a more public transit friendly place. It actually would be really good for this area to move away from requiring cars uh, to get in and out and around Alexandria and move towards public transit instead. Meanwhile, neighbors tell us another major concern is parking, something Wilson says needs to be addressed. We're going to have to do a whole series of neighborhood protection kind of things. Well, neighbors also told DC News Now they want to see 24-hour residents-only parking spaces. Other concerns we heard surround the potential change to the character of their neighborhoods, with one person saying they don't expect to stay there much longer if the plan does go through. Now, for more on this monumental potential move, keep it here. We're breaking down the timeline and what you can potentially expect. That's coming up at 1230.